All right, everybody. Thanks for thanks for joining the uh, this the CentOS Dojo. This is the last talk of the first day. We do have um, we do have five talks tomorrow, but this will be the last one today. Uh, and we've got Davide Cavaco, who's going to give an update on the hyperscale SIG. Um, and as a reminder, there is a Q and A tab. If you have any questions, uh, it's a lot easier for uh, speaker to take questions from there than to try to follow the chat. So, uh, Davide, thank you uh, for presenting today, and uh, it's all yours. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Davide. I chair the Hyperscale SIG, and this is the usual talk on updating on what we've been doing so far, and the focus is on the wrong window. Let me fix that. Much better. So we'll start with a quick recap of what the SIG is doing. Uh, we'll talk about deliverables and the recent, the recent work we did, and we'll close with a few words on what's coming up down the pipe. Let's get started. Uh, the goal of the Hyperscale SIG is to have a place uh, for companies and engineers working on large, primarily on large scale infrastructure environments to collaborate. Uh, we found over the years that a lot of companies that use CentOS end up kind of reinventing, reinventing the wheel internally and solving the same problems independently, but there wasn't really a space for folks to collaborate on. Uh, so we wanted to have a place that uh, people could collaborate on tooling, on packages to try to do this work together so we could all benefit on it. Also, we wanted to try to bring out in the open some of these developments that tend to happen in-house and tend to also die in-house and never really see the light of day. Um, this is focused on large-scale infrastructure, but it's absolutely open to anybody. Uh, so you don't have to be in a big company to participate in the SIG. If you want to do work uh, and you're interested in doing work uh, and you think this space will be beneficial for you, you are more than welcome to join. Our meetings are open and everything. Um, the SIG is primarily focused on CentOS Stream and all of our deliverables are targeted on CentOS Stream because that's what we are all using. Um, so that's what this talk will primarily be about. Uh, we, you can find the charter for the SIG at that page. Uh, that's the charter that was put together when we originally established the SIG. We've been publishing quarterly activity reports on the CentOS blog uh, that I encourage you to read if you're interested. Uh, we've also started a website with user documentation. Uh, this is something we started last year and has been steadily growing. Uh, we're hoping that can make it easier for people to consume content produced for the SIG. And we're also using that to document internal best practices, and so that we can make it easier for new team members to get onboarded. Uh, by the way, that uh, documentation website uh, is built from a Peggy or Git repo. So if you find mistakes there, if you want to contribute the documentation, you're also welcome to make PRs for that. Uh, the SIG was established in January uh, last year. Oh, yeah, it has been a year. Nice. Uh, we had originally six founded members, and uh, as of Today, we have more than tripled in size, uh, which is something I am really proud of. Uh, it's been really, really awesome to see this community grow and see more and more people get involved, uh, see people that we didn't really know before get involved. These, are, these wasn't just people from Facebook or from other companies, um, but it's been a lot, of, a lot of folks from the community as well, and it's been really great to see this. Uh, we have an IRC channel, uh, Pound Sando Cyberscale on Libra, this channel is also now based on metrics, so you can talk to us from both the IRC side and the metrics side. Um, usually, uh, I think most of us are in Pacific time, um, but there's usually folks hanging out there if you have questions. And if we don't answer immediately, we'll probably answer the day after. Uh, we have meetings on IRC every two weeks. Uh, we try to publish the meetings minutes uh, on, um, on that page as well. Uh, there's minutes going back to last year to when the city was founded. So if there were previous discussions you want to reference, you can see them there. Uh, we also do a monthly hackathon video hangout where we all hang together on a VC bridge on Zoom and either work together on stuff or chit chat. It's a good, it's a good opportunity to get to know people face to face and have some social time as well. Uh, we use Pagure for tracking SIG work items. Uh, so for everything we work on, there's an issue there that we try to keep up to date. Uh, so you can follow development there. And if you find, if there's things you want to work on or if you find issues with SIG, um, with content produced by the SIG, you can also report bugs there. Uh, I used to also have a list of conference talks on this slide, so, but we have done way too many conference talks on this. So I've moved it to a page that you can see and there's links to YouTube and slides and stuff. Uh, we did the last, the last version of this talk I gave was at Dojo in October. Um, so this roughly covers the work we've done since October till now. So what do we do in the SIG? Um, these are the broad scopes, uh, the broad spokes of work that we do. Uh, I see the main deliverable we have right now is uh, a set of package backports that tend to track, uh, that tend to move faster than 
the stock packages in CentOS. So there's packages where, for one reason or another, we might want to have a more recent version. Uh, and we can't contribute the more recent version to CentOS proper um, because, understandably, CentOS is locked on the version they have in the distribution. So we maintain this as a backport within the SIG itself. Uh, and these are meant to be dropping a replacement for the most part. Uh, we also have a set of packages that apply policy and configuration alternatives, uh, generally to enable additional options in a package that is already provided in CentOS that is unsuitable for upstream, uh, but that enables additional functionality. So one example is for IP tables. Uh, we have a set of packages that enable uh, the legacy IP tables backend. Uh, we have an additional repository that we use for large scale testing of features. Uh, this is used primarily for things that we would like to eventually contribute to the distribution, but aren't quite ready yet. Uh, and this makes it easy to test and use them. Uh, we also build and deliver a kernel, and we recently started building uh, and delivering spin live DVD ISO images for a distribution spin. Uh, I'll talk about all of these in more details in a bit. Start with the package backports. Uh, you can use the package backports today. If you DNF install CentOS release hyperscale, that will add our repo, and you will be able to access our packages. As I said, these are meant as dropping replacement for stock CentOS packages, so they should work out of the box and they shouldn't be too different or too surprising. Uh, we have a repo that you can use if you find bugs in these packages and you want to file them. Um, please file bugs in that repo and not on Bugzilla, because otherwise the maintainer of the package in CentOS would be very confused because they won't know what you're talking about. Um, it's worth noting that this repository is built against the PEL and requires a PEL. And it requires, uh, and the PEL in turn requires power tools or CRB on nine. Um, we do this because almost everybody that runs CentOS also runs a PEL. Uh, so there wasn't really any reason to not pull it in. Uh, one thing that is new uh, as of late last year is that we started building for both x86-64 and AR64. Uh, I believe all of our packages are now built for both architectures. Initially, we only had a subset. And in the future, we plan to have both updated in parallel. Uh, we don't support other architectures, but if folks from the community are interested in working on, say, PowerPC or S390, we would also welcome contributions for that. Uh, the main issue with architecture support is being able to test and support it, obviously. So if you don't have the hardware, it's kind of tricky. Uh, one backport in particular that we maintain that we want, that want to talk about for a bit is SystemD. Uh, within the SIG, we track the latest SystemD upstream. So right now, we ship SystemD 249, which was released a while ago. And we are in the process of updating to 250. Once 251 comes out, uh, probably in a few weeks, we'll also uh, start working on updating to that. Um, as of a uh, couple of months ago, we have builds available for both CentOS 8 and CentOS 9 of SystemD. These um, are updated in lockstep, so they'll always track the same version. Uh, and by the way, stock CentOS 9 um, is also in the process of being rebased to 250. So even without hyperscale, you will get a nice and modern system D there. Um, with this system D, we have a few policy changes as well compared to the build of system D that's included in a stock center stream, uh, in stock center stream. Uh, we default to the, uh, to the unified C group hierarchy with C group two, because nobody should really be using C group one at this point. Uh, and the nice thing about C group two is that it also enables a lot of advanced resource control features that otherwise wouldn't be available. Uh, we also ship additional packages for system D, UMD. Uh, which allows you to do user space out of memory management. Uh, this requires PSI, which is a feature that's provided by the stock CentOS stream kernel, but it does need an extra uh, command line knob. Uh, I think you have to pass PSI equal one if you're running that. We also ship system D network D, system D resolve D. Uh, in general, we ship everything that's available upstream, and you can refer to the upstream uh, news uh, documentation to see what changed in a given version. We also have a set of SLinux rules so that you can run this systemd backport with SLinux in enforcing mode. Um, these aren't that well tested, and I would really love uh, some feedback and ideally even some contribution from people that use SLinux and are experts in it, because I'm definitely not, and I'd be mostly winging this. Um, so this is an area where I think we could we could benefit from more community involvement for sure. Um, the way we do the development of systemd is that we have a fork. Uh, maintained on the CentOS SIG hyperscale repo. Uh, this automatically tracks the latest systemd. So we have a master branch there, a main branch there that mirrors the main branch on the systemd GitHub repo. And then we have feature branches for every version we make where we will we will branch it and then we will add whatever patches we need to backport. And that's what we use for our backports and our releases. 
the scripts and the build tools we use for these are published in a separate repo, and these are also the scripts that run on our CI. Um, Anita, who maintains some of the systemd work in this repo, has built has written up a nice contribution guide. So if you're interested in working or sending patches, you can refer to that. In addition to the releases, uh, as I mentioned, we also have a CI. We use the OpenShift CentOS CI, which is awesome, by the way. And if you haven't used it and you're a SIG, I would highly recommend you to look into that. And what we do with the CI is that we take every day, we take the latest Git, uh, Git main branch for systemd, we pack it up, we, we build it against the spec file that's currently in hyperscale, and we check if the build still works. Uh, and the, a, a nice byproduct of this is that we get daily builds of systemd. So if you need to test a very recent systemd feature that just made it to mainline, you can just grab a package from Koji, uh, and you can look up hyperscale bot and run it. Uh, and we found this to be really useful because it allows us to find issues with the packaging or with the distribution well long before they make release, so we can get them sorted out upstream. Uh, something else we would like to do eventually is some form of VM testing, so we can take these daily system builds and boot them, uh, but we're not quite ready for that yet. Uh, another thing we did recently has been updating the compression stack in CentOS Stream 8. Um, so we've updated both LZ4 and Z standard to the latest versions, which add a number of performance improvements. And with the standard, we also enable support in the CLI for other archival formats, uh, which is convenient if you want to use the CLI to unpack those archives. Now, this isn't terribly interesting per se, because it's just a version update. Uh, the reason I put it here is because uh, the reason we were able to do this is because these libraries are API and ABI compatible. So normally, if you update a library, you would need to rebuild all the downward dependencies. Now, half the distribution ends up recursively depending on one of these. So it wasn't really feasible for us to rebuild all of the distribution just to update these libraries. But because the libraries have an API and ABI guarantee upstream, we were able to do this without requiring any rebuilds, and this just works. Um, that's something that was quite nice and somewhat unexpected, to be honest. Uh, so we'll be keeping an eye out for other, other packages in the future that make the same kind of guarantee and see if it makes sense to have them updated uh, if the need arises. Uh, now, I've mentioned CentOS 39 a couple of times, and unless you've been living under a rock, you will know that CentOS 39 is available and ready for use. We've already started building packages for 9 in hyperscale. Uh, we plan going forward to build packages concurrently for Stream 8 and Stream 9 until Stream 8 uh, goes EOL down the road. Uh, we don't have a release package out for 9 published yet, so if you want to use our packages for 9, you will need to add the repo manually, but we have that in the works and we hope to have a release package out soon. Um, we, the main packages we have right now, I think, are systemd, we have kpatch, uh, we have a few other uh, that you can find, uh, butterfast progs. Um, the other thing, though, that I think is even more interesting than this is that we have been able to make a number of contributions to CentOS Stream 9 itself. Uh, so I've listed them here. Um, I worked on adding um, uh, systemd umdi to the systemd packaging that shipped in CentOS Stream 9 proper. Uh, Neil worked on packaging macros for Nginx, on support, um, better support for Pipewire with Bart Plumber and Jack, on Wayland support for GNOME Classic, and on several uh, several enhancements to SDL2. Um, I'm really proud of this uh, because doing this work made the made it possible to improve things in CentOS 9 proper, and it makes life better for everybody, not just for people using hyperscale. It also means that this is all stuff we don't have to maintain in hyperscale. Uh, so long-term, everybody wins if we can get more stuff into the distribution proper. Um, by the way, Neil, tomorrow we'll have a talk about contributing to CentOS Stream 9 that I would encourage you to watch as well if you're interested in more information on this. Um, now, moving on, on to the large-scale testing. The idea, as I mentioned before, is to have a space that we can use to test new changes to the distribution in a way that is easy to deploy in production. So a good example here is the DNF copy on write work that we are doing within Fedora. The idea behind DNF copy on write is to have enhancements to the packaging stack that allow us to leverage ButterFS features such as copy on write to make them more efficient. Um, I won't go in detail on the feature itself, but there was a previous Dojo talk last year, if you're interested. Um, but what's relevant here is that this feature requires a patched packaging stack. It's a fairly deep uh, patch stack on top of DNF, RPM, Libreco, and a few other packages. Uh, so it's not the kind of thing that you can easily test unless you're willing to rebuild the stack and, and patch it and run it. Uh, so we try to maintain it directly in hyperscale. We have a repository called uh, Experimental. 
So if you DNF install centers in these hyperscale experimental, you can get these packages and test them out if you would like. And these are the same packages we have deployed in production at Facebook now. Um, this work kind of stalled for the last few months, but there's been a flurry of activity lately um, because we have a new engineer that's helping out with it. Uh, and he put out an update on the hack and that you're welcome to read if you're interested. And we're hoping to make uh, more progress on this in the coming months and have an updated stack published um, probably in the next week or so. Now let's talk about the kernel. Uh, within Hyperscale, we ship our own kernel build. Uh, we ship a kernel that's based on the CentOS 39 kernel. So the CentOS 39 kernel is 514, so we ship a 514 kernel for both CentOS 38 and CentOS 39. Actually, the CentOS 38 right now is 512 because we haven't done the 514 build yet, but it is coming probably next week. The way we do the kernel development is similar to the way we do the systemd development in that we have a repo under the CentOS Hyperscale org that we use to stage patches. Uh, this kernel um, tries to stay as close as possible to the upstream kernel, but it has a number of config options enabled. Additionally, the main one being ButterFS support. Uh, it also might contain occasionally patches uh, that we haven't gotten upstream yet. Upstream, in my upstream, I mean into the rel kernel yet, although we try to stay as close as possible to the rel kernel, and we definitely do not want to diverge here as much as possible. Uh, one reason uh, this kernel is built within experimental, and that's the reason I call it a test kernel. And the main reason it's a test kernel right now is because it still does not support secure boot, uh, which is something we're working with CPE and infra team um, to sort out, uh, because this is a problem impacting all six, not just hyperscale, um, that we don't really have a way to do builds for secure boot just yet. Um, now with the kernel, uh, as I mentioned before, we have done, we were able to do a number of contributions to CentOS 39. And I was really happy to see that we were also able to do contribution to the CentOS 39 kernel. Uh, most recently, uh, we had an MR up to sync the Z standard code base with uh, the one in 5.16 and enable a few additional options. We had another MR to enable config crypto blade 2 b which is a prerequisite for ButterFS. And we also had a number of little fixes. In the future, we hope to be able to send MRs to keep the ButterFS stack up to date uh, and fix any issues that might come up uh, during feedback from the community. Neil brought up a contribution guide for how to send patches to the RAL kernel that I'd encourage you to read if you're interested. Um, the process is still being worked on, um, but it, it does work. And I can tell you that we did get multiple MRs merged at this point. So if this is something you're interested in doing, I would highly encourage you to have a look at it. Another welcome surprise that we had uh, was that the KML SIG published a KML battery fast module for CentOS 39. And this is a module that you can use if you're not running the hyperscale kernel, but if you're running the stock CentOS 39 or the RAL 9 kernel where RAL 9 will come out, you can install KMOD ButterFS from the ButterFS from the KMOD SIG, and you will be able to access ButterFS file systems. And this will use the same ButterFS code that's in the RAL kernel tree, and it's the same code that we will be working on. So I thought this was an excellent example of synergy between different, between different SIGs, and I will hope to see more of these in the future. Uh, we also do work on the user space side of the kernel. As I mentioned before, we maintain ButterFS progs within the SIG, because um, ButterFS progs is not part of, uh, of CentOS proper, because CentOS doesn't ship with ButterFS enabled right now. So we backported it from Fedora. It's currently at 5.14.2. Uh, we plan to keep this in sync. Uh, we also enable ButterFS support in several components of the storage stack and in the installer. Um, so Neil uh, has an Anaconda uh, tree for there with ButterFS support enabled. And this is used uh, for the distribution spin that we'll talk about in a moment, and it's shipped to a dedicated spin repo. So unless it, you won't get access to it unless you enable that repo. And this is so that we don't accidentally update um, the storage stack on existing systems that don't need these. Uh, other user space components we've been working on. I recently published a build of East Tool 516, which included extensive hardware support improvements. This also, I also put this up as an MR to get it updated in CentOS 3.9, because 3.9 was still shipping with 5.12, uh, I believe. I'm not sure, but an older version for sure. Uh, that MR is still being worked on, uh, but it, it, the nice thing about this was that this MR also led their kernel engineering folks to update some of, to backport some networking changes to the rel kernel to support this installed version. So that was another great example of synergy. Um, finally, we ship kpatch as part of hyperscale. If you're interested, kpatch is used for doing kernel live patching. 
uh, CentOS does ship KPatch, uh, but they ship an older version and it doesn't include KPatch build. Our build includes KPatch build. It also backports a number of features. Uh, lately, we added Clang PGO, PGO support, which is an optimization feature, um, which is useful if you're building kernels with Clang. Um, we plan to keep this up to date. This is something we that we use in production at Meta. Um, so it's something we'll be keeping up to date going forward. Uh, next, we also have container images. Uh, we have a minimal container image based on our repos and packages. Uh, this is built from scratch. It's not built from the official image uh, because the official image is based on top of the UEI and that didn't work out, um, didn't work for what we were trying to do because there were conflicts between the packages. You can see how it's built there. It's built with Builda and um, Podman as you'd expect. It's published to Quay. You can run it with the Podman one-liner. This is only a stream eight image for now. Uh, I'm actively working on a stream nine one. It's also somewhat manually maintained at this point, uh, mostly because we haven't figured out yet how to run build uh, within OpenShift. Um, but I'm hoping to have this hooked up to the CI so that we can get it updated on a like, daily or weekly basis or whenever it does a compose out. Um, finally, we also, as I mentioned before, we have a live media spin. Um, so we've been producing distribution spins uh, with both GNOME and KDE Plasma. These are meant as live DVDs. So they, they boot and behave. If you ever use, like try to install Fedora and Fedora boots to a live DVD image, it's roughly the same. So it will boot to a graphical desktop environment with either GNOME or KDE. You can run the installer from there and install the distribution and it will by default ship with either GNOME or KDE. These use our, uh, our repos, our kernel, our packages. Uh, they ship with ButterFS support out of the box, and you can install to an hard drive with ButterFS. Uh, you can download them uh, from that URL, uh, and you can report issues on the back tracker. Again, please don't report issues about these pins to CentOS proper, because that would be very confusing. Please use our tracker for that. Uh, we only have spins for stream 8 right now. The ones for stream 9 are still a work in progress. Um, notably for 9, there were a lot of missing packages in Nepal that we had to work on first. I believe we have most of that sorted out now, so I expect the spins for nine to be coming out fairly soon. Uh, coming up, so I've mentioned that the spin, right now we do this pin build somewhat manually. If you would really like to do this within CBS uh, and build them the way the normal distribution ISOs are built, that is something that's being worked on um, and discussed with Infra team. Uh, we have a SIG member that is interested in updating in maintaining an updated Kimu package in Appel. Um, we, this is relevant in the context of hyperscale because within hyperscale, we have, um, an updated version of the virtualization stack in a hotfixes repo where we maintain an updated version of libvirt. So it would be useful to also have Kimu available, but if we can maintain that in Appel, that's much better because it makes everybody's life easier. We are exploring, uh, work around ButterFS transactional updates, uh, which is something we would like to enable in the future. As I mentioned, we want to put together a continuous build pipeline for the container image. And finally, we would still like to release at some point cloud images uh, with hyperscale repos enabled. Uh, we have resources where you can reach us. Uh, you can, uh, just the links to the SIG that I put on before, you can read our documentation, you can talk to us on IRC. You're welcome to join our meetings. Both are bi-weekly and the VC Hangout are open to everyone. You do not have to be a member of the SIG to join them. Feel free to show up, say hi. If you want to work on something, if you have any question, um, in the, in the census calendar, you can find all the details, uh, the issue tracker. And if there's like a, a more a discussion inside that would benefit from email, feel free to use the census devel mailing list. That's all I had. And I went very quickly. So we left plenty of time for questions. Thank you. All right. Let me look at the Q and A tab and see if we have any questions. Alexander asks, do you consider working with image builder service? Um, I have not personally considered mostly because I haven't done much with that. Neil would probably be able to answer that question better. I would say in general, we're open to working with pretty much anything and anybody. Um, I think for image builds, image builds is some of a confusing space, uh, because there is a, there's a lot of overlap between different tools and different, different things that are available. Uh, like there's always build, there's QE, there's a uh, live uh, media creator, there's live CD tools, and probably a few more that I'm forgetting. Um, I'd say that having having more unified, unified tool and more consistency in this space would definitely be beneficial for everybody. Uh, 
Anonymous asks, what's the most interesting thing your SIG has done in your view? That's an interesting question. Um, I don't know about interesting. I can tell you that in terms of usefulness, I think the, the system D backport is probably the most impactful deliverable we have. And in terms of like things that is used by the most people, um, I think in terms of interesting, I think the distribution spins are really interesting. And it's something that I was not really expecting to see coming out of this SIG when we originally established. Um, but it provides a great environment for showcasing and testing uh, the work we're doing. Anonymous is asking, anywhere going with Redfish hardware management? Not that I know of, but if this is something you're interested in working on, by all means, feel free to feel free to join and, and talk to us. Um, trying to think. Yeah, I don't I don't think I've seen anybody bring that up. I have seen people talk about Redfish within CentOS context before, but I don't think I've seen anybody bring it up within the SIG. Let's see. Oh, and Neil mentions in the chat that image builder is still OS build powered, and there's still a couple of issues with OS build that's causing problems there. So it sounds like there's some further discussion needed there. Uh, Anonymous also asks any plan to support TPM remote access station in the SIG? Uh, I believe there's already TPM support in CentOS. Uh, and in fact, at one point, I had looked at um, having updated builds of TPM tools and a few other practices within Hyperscale. I honestly forgot if we actually published those or not. Um, but that was definitely something that we were looking at. In general, I don't think anybody's working directly on that, but I don't think there's anything that prevents you from doing that now. Um, the lack of secure boot is kind of obnoxious, uh, although that's a bit, that's orthogonal to that's orthogonal to attestation, but it's something within the same ballpark. Um, again, I would say if this is an area that excites you, uh, you're definitely welcome to join us and work on it. Oh, and Michelle mentions that Trousers is in Apple 9, if anybody needs uh, TPM 1.2 support for 9. Yeah, in, in 9, uh, that's still 9 drop support for TPM 1.2, but because Trousers is in Apple 9, you can leverage it there. I was going over the chat and seeing, I don't see any other questions there. Uh, Neil linked to a couple of issues uh, relevant to the OS build conversation that uh, issues 455 and 517 for the recording on the OS build repo. Hey, Sean. Hey. Looks like that's all the questions. Cool. Cool. So, uh, well, thank you for that uh, presentation. Um, we're finishing up a little early today. The hallway track is, is open if people want to hang out and, um, you know, chat or whatever. But you can also just go back to the real world and enjoy your day. So. Uh, we will start again tomorrow at uh, the same time we started today, 1500 UTC. Um, so thanks again to Davida and to all of our speakers today. And um, we'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you. Bye.